This becomes a way to grow cultures of food for your fish. And you can get some pretty big ones. You can do a worm culture, for example. In a matter of a week or two, there will be hundreds. Would make a wonderful food for your fish. But how in the world do you get enough of them out of that little jar to make a difference? Here's the secret. Right on in. You're it, Father Fish. The resurrection jar has become a very popular item over the last few years. It provides an opportunity for the hobbyist to study the living matter, particularly the microfauna that's living in waters adjacent to their home. It's a very simple process, actually. One simply finds a container, a jar. Well, here's one that I haven't set up yet that I'm excited about. It's a, a pear-shaped jar. Gather some leaf mulch or other debris, rotting debris of a vegetable matter, like leaves or twigs or those kinds of things, from a local stream or pond. Put a handful in a jar this size and fill it with the water from the pond and then set it on a windowsill. Now, you want a western exposure or northern, if at all possible. Afternoon sun tends to cook it, so you want to be careful about that. Let it sit there for a month and observe the animals that are living and growing in it. Typically, it will be a wonderful experience. Now, if something happens and nothing seems to be growing, then try some material from another location. It's a good idea to have two or three or more of these little jars all at once in order to have the best possible culture. A couple of rules with this. There was discussion early on, and it was really my fault about putting mud in the jar, and I misspoke. Mud from a creek or a stream or a pond tends to be pretty rich, and in a small container, it tends to overwhelm the, the amount of water that, that it's in. And so more often than not, it will foul. So don't use mud. Use leaf mulch or grass mulch, whatever is in there that seems to be breaking down because that is what the microfauna are feeding on. So by gathering a handful of that and putting it in your, in your jar, you will have transplanted into your home the very animals that are living microscopically in that body of water near your home. So no mud and keep it away from heat, the kind of heat that the sun can create in the middle of the afternoon coming through a window. I had a jug sitting in a window. The temperature went up to about 120. Killed everything. It was a waste of ever. I now have a piece of white paper sitting between the window and the jars in order to cut down the, the uh, intense heat coming in, and that seems to be working pretty well. They really don't need a whole lot of light. It's more important for them to have uh, just a steady, a steady exposure of light, but it's really the nutrients that are most important, and that's the decaying leaves. Now, if you want to add an air stone, you certainly can do that. It's not critical. It can be helpful. If you want to add a lid to it, I would prefer some kind of gauze or a handkerchief, something on top, maybe closed with a rubber band, if you're concerned about insects getting into it or coming out of it. Capped or uncapped, but don't cap by putting a sealed lid on it. You need air exchange, at least for this process. So what you have done now is you've created a, a little eco-environment, one that will provide room and nutrients for a population of microfauna. There are many different kinds that you can expect. One thing to be aware of that 
is very important. And that is that microfauna don't understand things like borders. And they don't understand things like invasive species. The same amoeba that are living in your backyard are living in every backyard on Earth. Minus, of course, those that are frozen tundra and cannot support that kind of life. The Antarctic comes to mind, although there are bacteria, to be sure, in the Antarctic. And they are not particularly discreet to that environment. The air, our atmosphere, carries the spore of these little tiny animals literally all over the globe so that paramecium are paramecium wherever you go it's the same animal they exist literally everywhere on earth now to be sure there will be some variation based on nutrition based on water conditions based on a host of other divergent kinds of conditions but in general these creatures live everywhere on Earth. Let's take the next step. You've been observing your jar for a while. You just see lots of little things swimming around in it. And you've determined that some of them, well, like Daphnia, for example, would make a wonderful food for your fish, but how in the world do you get enough of them out of that little jar to make a difference? Here's how you do it. Here's the secret. A shoe box with an inch or two of water and some dry leaves, not wet leaves. You don't want to bring a brand new culture in. And then comes the really tricky part. And that is to use an eyedropper or a turkey baster and separate out some of those Daphnia to put in this new shoebox. You only need a half a dozen or so, and they will begin to multiply very quickly. In a matter of a week or two, there will be hundreds. So it doesn't take long. You can do that with anything. Now, obviously, some of the tiniest creatures will be the most difficult to separate, but you will notice sometimes in a container such as this, there will be a cloud that's moving in the water. That's paramecium. Use your turkey baster, get a nice big pulse of those out and squirt it into your, into your shoe box with nutrients. You can use the leaves. There are other nutrients as well. And then just let it let it thrive in a matter of a very short time a week or so you'll have a very rich culture which will be perfect food for baby fish so this then becomes a way to be able to grow cultures of food for your fish and you can get some pretty big ones you can do a worm culture for example with the black worms that you will discover or the uh, the detritus worms that will pop up in your jar. Those are probably the most important thing you can do with the culture. To build a food web in your tank, you simply take some of that culture out of the jar and put it in the tank. Now that brings living critters into the tank. You can then add to that, build on that bed by adding dry leaves. As they soak and sink, they will be attacked by the animals you put in. The fish won't get all of them. Some will hide, and you can add culture to that periodically if you feel like it's not rich enough. As you get that layer built up, it should take you a month or two to get about an inch layer built up, either in the entire tank or in one section of it. Get it built up, do it slowly, do it gradually. Don't try to do it all at once. You could pollute the tank by putting too much nutrient. It would be like if you were overfeeding, if you were dumping a can of food in the, 
in the tank. You would never do that. Don't do it with the leaves either. Small amounts at a time and let it build up gradually. And the tank will be able to assimilate that and to develop the biomass needed in order to sustain that volume of nutrients. So the food web then is critical to be able to create that genuine food cycle that allows everything that's in the tank to be fed. And it allows everything to cycle through all of its stages and deterioration and, and uh, being beneficial nutrient for plants and fish and so forth. It's a critical way to be able to maintain your tank long term. And if you have small fish, they'll thrive in that environment. They will breed in the litter. The babies will be able to find food down in that leaf mulch. It will be an amazing experience for you. So give all of these things a go and keep us posted how it's working out. There are quite a number of people over on our Father Fish Shoal, link below, who are doing precisely this with amazing success. Many of the pictures that you've been looking at are taken from just those folks who are maintaining their resurrection jars and posting pictures of them on the Father Fish Shoal channel. So do join in. Have fun, enrich your tank, and make the resurrection jar the key to providing live food for your aquarium. Bless you all. Wonderful to be with you. And I will see you again soon. Bye for now.